This video is basically going to focus on achieving a higher rank in Bayonetta or Bayonetta 2 even uh, and some of these tips can definitely be applied to other character action games such as Devil May Cry or that series. So the first tip I want to go over is not taking damage. It's easy right? Sounds simple a lot of people like to button mash in these sorts of games. They like to not think about what they're doing uh, and they like to just attack, attack, attack. Now the reason why that may not work all the time is because the game likes to catch on. Um, enemies uh, delay their attacks or they attack from off screen sometimes or like they may attack from behind. Things can get pretty hectic. You may not realize an enemy is about to attack so you want to dodge and it's not enough to just dodge you need to get it precise the reason I talk about precision is because you want to employ the use of witch time uh, for those of you who don't know uh, even though you probably will considering the tutorial of the game actually runs you through it witch time basically occurs when you you basically dodge within a certain amount of frames just before an enemy's attack the reason why this is so useful is because it slows down time, uh, it adds a uh, score multiplier and it lets you wail on enemies sort of uh, free of charge really, free of danger. So not only will this boost your score, um, but it essentially means you're not going to take damage. And it's going to take a little, little bit of time to learn some enemy patterns and how they attack, uh, but once you start pulling off those just, uh, or you know, those perfect dodges even, uh, you'll find yourself getting higher and higher ranks for the, uh, I guess, for the damage counter in the uh, score screen. Uh, because if you don't know, the more damage you take, the worse your score gets, and you'll probably end up getting like silver or like bronze or like a stone award, and then uh, that just uh, throws everything off. Second tip I want to talk about is being fast, being quick, being efficient. Uh, you want to know, or you want to get to know Bayonetta's move set, and you want to know what does what sort of damage uh, because you don't want to be dilly dallying and like running about and doing nothing uh, or focusing only on dodging when you know you're you're in a encounter so you basically want to be as fast and efficient as possible when destroying enemies now if you want to go in depth a lot of the verses uh, that's what they're called the encounters a lot of them have their own sort of times for specific ranks um, but this ties into the damage sort of score because if you're fast in defeating your enemies, they're not going to have a chance to attack you and deal damage and ruin your score. Third tip I'd probably talk about is varying up your combos. So each attack you do in game and each combo you employ the use of uh, adjusts your da well, not your damage but your score multiplier. Uh, in different sorts of ways. Now, the key to getting a high score is by varying up your combos. Don't use the same like three hit wicked weave combo which a lot of people like to spam. Um, you know, don't just only focus on using special techniques. You want to use a nice blend. Not only that, but you want you want to switch up the use of weaponry. Now you might be near the start of the game and like you're kind of wondering what do you mean to vary up your weaponry, but um, very early on you're sort of uh, introduced to the ability to uh, switch weapons. Now the way you you know get these weapons is you know either by searching through the environment or by defeating certain enemies. The key point is you want to var vary up in real time by using the um, the left trigger, you want to vary up your weapon sets and you want to use different combos because essentially the more variability there is in your combo the higher the score meaning you know you'll be able to achieve a higher overall score. Now the good thing about these uh, tips is that they sort of carry over into the higher difficulties they're not difficulty specific so they will work on lower difficulties as well. Just something quick that I thought I should touch on, uh, even though I, I think it's an obvious sort of hint, is don't use items, essentially. Get good sort of thing. Uh, don't use any items because they will reduce your score uh, and you won't get as much... Um, 
you won't get as much of a reward at the end of a chapter because if you don't know, um, all the encounters are sort of tallied up and you're given a score at the end of your <coughs> sorry, at the end of your chapter. This score sort of determines how many halos you get, which then determines what you can and cannot buy, such as special techniques or weapons or items to use, even though you shouldn't really be using items, or you know, items that will uh, boost your health or your magic meter. Bayonetta, like many other character action games, are kind of designed to be rank run, even. Um, these sort of tips also apply, you know, as an example I stated Devil May Cry, that series. Um, again, similar, de similar game design where they're meant to be rank run. So if you fail an encounter, you know, feel free to, to, to restart. Or, you know, if you feel like you've, you've kind of had a bad run of, of encounters, feel free to, like, reset the entire chapter. Now, getting a pure platinum rank means that you have to get a pure platinum rank in every single encounter even the ones that might you might have to go out of your way of to reach that said don't worry about getting great ranks the first run through you'll likely be stumbling your way through the game or getting to grips with the game and its features meaning you might not get the perfect score that you hope for but don't sweat it because you can always just re like replay the chapter once you're more experienced or even once you've got you know a more versatile moveset or you know an expansive range of weaponry the reason I say that is because lots of enemies are sort of uh, have certain weaknesses to certain weapon sets so you can't efficiently min and max on your first run through of the game I should also touch on Alfheim's uh, for those of you who've played the Devil May Cry series again uh, they're similar to secret missions in the sense that they give you a specific task to uh, undertake and complete uh, and once that's been done uh, you'll be given a reward you know that might be like a crystal piece of crystallized heart or you know a one half of a of a moon for your you know your magic meter um, but they basically provide little challenges for you to undertake a lot of them are quite challenging and they require you to think, but the rewards are well worth it. And I believe there are 21 of those scattered throughout the first Bayonetta at least. I'm not too sure about the number for the second. I guess one final fee, uh, key feature that I sh I guess one final key feature that I should talk about is dodge offset. Um, basically this is a system that's been sort of interwined into the combo system which allows you to still dodge. Uh, and pull off combos without having them be reset. Uh, this means that you can keep your score multiplier going, allowing you to uh, go for those high combo sort of ranks. Now, the reason I mention this is because a lot of people don't really care or don't really think to use this sort of system um, very well. But it basically allows you to, you know, dodge out of the way, especially if you if you use it with Witch Time and it allows you to position yourself properly to you know, do the maximum amount of damage that you possibly can. Um, a lot of people don't really think about it, but it's, it is something to just uh, think about and take note of because you know, it can be vital to getting these high sort of ranks. Now I know this has been a bit of a shotgun blast of information uh, with me talking non-stop for about nine minutes at this point, I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically it. It's you know you've got to you've got to stay on your toes. Um, one thing I sort of didn't really touch on um, was camera control. Enemies won't basically attack you from when they're off camera. You know they'll have to be on camera to initiate uh, uh, an attack. So that means you won't you won't really be hit unfairly because if they do start an attack, it means that they're on screen and that you can see them. And that means you've had ample time to actually, you know, employ the use of a dodge. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm having fun with the uh, with the game. It's uh, it's held up gloriously on the Switch. Um, can't wait for you know the infinite non-stop climax mode. That's going to be a pain. Um, but yeah, I mean, with with tips like these, uh, it should be a breeze, really. <laughs>